this is it. That was so. Uh, this is that was so hopeful international. Huh? <laughs> About uh, 20 miles out of Portland. Yeah, quiet little town here. Yeah, that's one heck of a place to start the cause, right there. You think? Concerned citizens worried about the increasing unfairness against those on the sex offender registry and the and the uh, added insult of charging registrant fam registered families seventy dollars a year for the privilege of being on the Oregon humiliating sex offender list. That's what got us all going before my time too. I didn't join until about late 2000 or 2001. Yeah, I think it started in early 2000. Um, it certainly had his website up by then. And you found them through a... Uh, Nickel ads. Yeah. There's, a little ten there's a little welcome to boring Oregon sign back there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they can't afford a sign. They're only on one side of town though. <laughs> but, um, it certainly is interesting to, um, you know, have a movement started in such a small, quaint little town in the farthest reaches of Portland. Well, and a good place because we had our meetings out here too, so um, those of us in Portland would drive out Highway 26, you know, 10, 15 miles, meet at their home, those who lived in Boring. And uh, did our mailers and strategy sessions there at their home around their dinner table. Um, probably met every every two weeks, maybe every week, every two weeks, depending on what was going on. And made a made a pretty big uh, effort to raise money. We spent three or four thousand dollars that uh, was on either postage or you know, printed materials that we would send out to registered families all across Oregon trying to raise funds. We'd spend $4,000, let's say, bring back $4,300. So barely recouping our investment. So we did that three, at least three different times and it just gave up on it. It just wasn't making enough of a difference. We wanted to get ahead, not break even. Yeah. So we had to give up on it. We even had letters returned to us with a note saying, take me off your mailing list. And these are from registered families. What do you suppose they did that? Why do you think they didn't stand up and or donate or anything? At a time, uh, and, and especially those who went to prison, I, I did not go to prison. Uh, I was, I got parole, I was going to be probation. Uh, I think the prison experience probably, uh, along with you know, the, the new, this label called sex offender label, uh, all those persons uh, uh, on the registry uh, beat them down. They're, they're beaten down, and prison life gave them a status of even a uh, you know, lower status than anybody else in prison. So that with rude, crude, mean treatment by the, uh, the prison bureaucracy led to their being uh, beaten down so far as to when they came out, they, they were willing to stay beaten down and not challenge the man anymore. They gave up. They must not have had some kind of inner voice that would tell them to, uh, to stay strong and to stand up for your rights, be a proud American, um, to be uh, conscious of your, your legal rights, your constitution, your bill of rights, and be able to deploy that in a way that um, gets you up off of your lowly feelings so that you can stand up for yourself and makes you stand up for yourself. Freedom isn't free, as they say. Yeah. But yet, registrants seem not to know that or don't care about that. Many of my conversations with registrants here in Oregon are that it's not so bad. That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a list. I don't mind. No, I really, I don't mind. They, don't, they, they say, I don't mind. I don't mind being on the list. Being on the list is just like uh, brushing your teeth. It's, it's no big deal. It's just an administrative thing. No, I can deal with it. So they, 
they've accepted it as a normal way of living. What a thing that is. That's not the way I was brought up. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, do you, do you see things as being different now, or do you think that the, uh, the fight is still just as difficult now as it was when you first started way back in 2001? Well, it's easier in the sense that more people, I think, generally are aware how, and not just because of sex offender registry laws, but because of the many laws that have been passed, things like the USA Patriot Act, which wiped out the Fourth Amendment, or the various laws signed recently in 2012 by President Obama that allows for the government to effectively disappear you, you can be held without trial and without access to courts or attorneys indefinitely until the end of hostilities in this war on terror. Um, people are beginning to realize that, uh, and not just those laws I've mentioned, but we live in a, you know, they're getting a sense that we live in a, a police state, a real fascist police state, and you have to look through that lens to see what the registry actually is. It's not about public safety, it's about political power, career opportunities, it's about um, the prison industrial complex, uh, keeping their prison beds filled, it's a lot of these things. So, but it's anything but public safety. I mean, in fact, I mean, ask yourself this question. Can you think of a more politically abused topic than public safety? Now, at the, at the national level, in Congress and in Washington, D.C., generally, um, they don't call it public safety. They call it national security. Everything's about national security. But that's public safety, too, isn't it? Exactly. The states use public safety, the feds use national security. It's all about cheating the citizens out of their freedoms so that, um, in that when they give up their liberties, the power of government grows to fill in the void and that you, you gave up a little bit and the power of the government grows. I think one of the biggest things that uh people struggle to tackle with, it, with it, especially within our cause. I mean, the few who do step up, um, you know, I think that some of them, and I'm sure you agree with me, that some of them fail to see the big picture. They don't see, um, you know, how, how does the sex offender registry issue tie into greater issues like, you know, like the war on terror or, you know, the, even the greater issues like the war, you know, the war on crime or homelessness or you know, or other social justice issues. Um, you know, how do you see these, you know, this this narrow focused um, area that we do with, with, this, with the sex offender registers, how does that tie into the big picture? Well, families, uh, as far as I can gather, are uh, busy people, as anybody, you know, is these days, as people are today, uh, so that uh, if they have any time at all to put their attention to politics or in, in, the, in the politics of fighting these these sex offender registration laws, they haven't got a lot of bandwidth, so uh, the time they have goes to a very specific point, the, you know, fighting the sex offender registry laws by grouping with others online, for example, uh, and getting involved that way. They haven't got more bandwidth to maybe read more generally what's going on in politics and in the uh, effort to, um, you know, under the, under the cover of public safety or national security to make citizens of this country safe from terrorism, they don't, I don't think they make that connection um, because they simply don't have the time, I think is the first reason. Uh, the second reason is I don't think they read much. I, I think they, they, they stay very specifically, narrowly glued to the, uh, our movement, the, the repeal the sex offender law movement, but um, for, I think they'd rather specialize than be broad. And I think you have to be both if you can. Or maybe not so deep, but a little wider than maybe your politics allows. But uh, these are these are all part of a larger tapestry of this police state that we've allowed to come about in the last ten years, especially that that has put every American on a list of some sort, whether a dissident list, a no-fly list, a terrorist list, um, a friend or a material supporter of a terrorist list. Registration lists, arsonists lists, deadbeat dads lists. You know, these are government control lists. This is what you expect in reading history books about uh, uh, Stalin's Soviet Union or the, uh, the fascists in Germany in the 1930s or the 1920s fascists in Italy, the, or, or, or the or what went on in uh, Mao's China or. Uh, any number of other examples in, in the 
history of the world in the last of, of the 20th century, maybe. So, um, I don't know why it is that we don't see these things, but um, they're there, and through the efforts of uh, my friend Mr. Logue and myself, maybe we can communicate on that a little more often to tie it in. I think that tapestry needs the thread called the registry thread tied in and woven into the tapestry that we understand about our world so far. Yeah. Well, so, uh, so hopeful, you know, does have its place in our history, um, obviously, because it was one of the first groups and it morphed over the years from a legal defense fund to a, um, you know, into a international forum support network for registered citizens, first of its kind, I believe, um, you know, and, and everything, uh, you know, uh, how far along do you think we, you know, we are since those times, since those early days? I mean, you know, do you really, do you see we, us, you know, having successes over the years and growing and becoming more organized? Do you think, you know, that that's, that's a good thing? It's a, you know, uh, is there anything more you think that we should be doing? Well, the answer to your, the first part of your question is, have we come very far in the years since we started our efforts to uh, fight these laws? And sure, absolutely. I mean, we have uh, made efforts in growing our information base, number one. I mean, when I started out, I didn't know that uh, registrants had low reoffense rates, for example, or at least it was new to me when I first joined, and it was known by my compatriots at that time back in the so hopeful legal defense fund days. Uh, we didn't have many facts. We only knew that we had to organize ourselves and build ourselves into some kind of movement, which would then have the resources to get the facts and build our arguments. So since those times, we've grown in, uh, in magnitudes uh, since those days. And have grown our numbers up, not just in Oregon, but across the states. Um, certainly the bigger states have more populations, are able to have more members. But it's, but it's been a slow process. But I think, you know, bit by bit, uh, more people who are on the registry are reaching up, and, and, you know, and to find other people like themselves, whether they're family members or, other, or just a registrant looking for a connection with other registrants, to stand up for themselves. And uh, that's, that's been going on, and it continues to happen today in 2014. And the future looks pretty bright in the way I look at it, even though I, 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 compl I complain frequently about it as a movement that isn't moving along that fast. But if I have to be honest with myself regarding that, that particular position, well, but we haven't got the resources or labor to, to go out and get the more, uh, the additional funds and labor. So the whole thing is, it's not a curve. It's not a growth curve upward. It's an exponential curve, I think. It's accelerating in the, uh, in the pace that it's, it, it, it has had, again, where it is today and where it's grown to. So I have uh, good, uh, good thoughts about the ultimate uh, success of our movement to repeal all these laws, both at the state level and the national level. Uh, the question is when. It's hard to do that math with uh, with the size of the organizations we have across the country today, but I'm, I'm still positive. Uh, groups like RSOL and the individual groups out there, uh, certainly one that uh, Derek Loeb operates at Once Fallen, are, uh, are indications that uh, we've got some great fighters out there who, who are knowledgeable and healthy and willing to get out there in the public as well and, and carry the carry the fight to new heights and levels. In terms of uh, what we need to do uh, is, and I've said this for a long time, we need to develop our political efforts. Uh, we've done a great job on the legal and informational front, and on the structural front, we've done some good things there. But uh, we need now to develop our, uh, our political efforts in areas where militancy and radicalism are part of what we talk about on a routine basis. We need to be more militant. That doesn't mean throwing Molotov cocktails, but it does mean that we need to uh, be face-to-face -face with people who are our opponents, whether they be uh, sitting at a legislative testimony table or whether it's holding up signs at a state capitol step somewhere or on a busy 4x4 highway, uh, various kinds of messages, and working with other political groups. Um, this whole thing is like an onion with various ring layers. Uh, we are the center layer, let's say. The ring out from us might be uh, the gay rights movement, uh, where they've learned a lot of things about politics. We, you know, we could learn from them. 
and a ring out from that might be uh, constitutional groups that are fighting to uh, get our uh, get the money out of politics, for example, and to um, have a new constitutional amendment that says money is not speech and corporations are not people. And so that we can take back our government and then you can go out from there to other onion ring layers out from there. But we have to partner, partner and come face to face with our opponents. That is the message I would say is, is part of the bigger part of the uh, the need to do list on that it goes on that need to do list yeah well we certainly complain at times because we care about the cause obviously <laughs> you know 